Good morning to Grace Church. If you'll stand to your feet, we're going to worship our Lord and Savior like we do every week. What are you thankful for today? Tell your neighbor. Here we go. Yeah, come on. Hands together. That's good. Let's go. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Signs and wonders, come on, and resurrection power. Still, the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Oh, my praise belongs to you forever. Oh, this is my testimony. Story. I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Blood and washed in water. Woo! Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Our God, we finish what He started. You know it. Our God, we finish what He started. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story.
from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will see the goodness of God. trust in this world. I know this church so well. We don't trust in man. We trust in God. Come on, let's sing. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine He's been my fourth man in the fire time after time all of his spirit 
washed in his blood And what he did for me on Calvary Is more than he Well, I trust in God My Savior, the one
You get to make the decision where you place your trust in this life. You can look in the mirror and say, I'm going to trust that person. You can put your trust in your finances, the stock market, your health. You can put your trust in your looks. Not a good idea, by the way. In the Bible times, they actually had a phrase. They said it like this. They said, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the Lord our God. And today we'd probably say some trust in their money and some trust in their own good works, but we trust in the Lord our God. We're not righteous on our own. We're not self-righteous. We're only righteous because of what the Lord's doing in our lives. He cleans us up and he forgives us. This summer, 55 people got baptized in the lake. Last service, another six people got baptized. This gathering, another five people are getting baptized because God is, God is moving in people's lives and in the church. If you don't know, the purpose of baptism is very clear. Like after you decided to repent and, and turn from your sin and, and to attempt to live a life that honors God, you've said, Lord, forgive me of my uh, sins. I want to live for you. When you've repented, the very next thing is to get baptized. And maybe you had some cool parents that helped you get baptized as a kid or maybe you got baptized as a teenager, but you didn't understand it. We think it's really important to wait till you get it, to wait till you understand it. And on your own volition to say, you know what? I want to honor God with my life. And so we have five people today saying, hey, I'm going under the water. The old is gone, the new has come. I've already made this decision to serve the God, to repent, and now I'm doing part two of that. I'm getting baptized, and I'm joining the church and attempting to leave my own life behind. I'm not self-righteous. I'm, I'm trusting in God to be righteous in my life. So would you bow, uh, go ahead and not bow. Would you go ahead and sit down for a moment, and we're going to watch some of their stories and celebrate with them as they get baptized. My name is Adelina. I am 12 years old. I was born in a Christian family, and I go to, to church every Sunday with them. The reason why I wanted to be baptized is because so I can, like, restart my whole, my whole life and dying over my sins. I'm excited to have my grandparents, my friends, maybe, and my parents come watch me. And when you go up and come from up the water, you're restarting your whole life again, like, and to be born again as a, as a, not, as a non-sinner. Peyton, and I came to know Jesus when I was at a young age. I had a friend who would always ask me to come to church, so I've been in the church off and on um, for pretty much my whole life. Um, I want to get baptized because when I was in Gleanings, I felt the Holy Spirit for the first time. A guest speaker came and was talking about what our next steps were and how baptism, we were called to do that, and I just feel like that was for me. Parker Wagner. I uh, have always known Jesus to be my Lord and Savior and never really lived that way. A couple months back, I was just praying and turned into uh, just the pouring out of my, my shame and my guilt. And uh, he just, he told me, just give it all to him. And I said, it's yours, God. No longer feel that shame, no longer feel that guilt. After that prayer of repentance, I just knew that was my next step was to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ.
Var Gregerson. I started to know God's love when I started helping in the toddler room. I got to like help toddlers know Jesus and learn more patience with me. I can feel his presence like every time something super exciting happens or when I'm just like starting to feel super lonely. I am super excited to be baptized. I am a little scared, but I know that Jesus will be there with me and help me through it. My name is Zaley Bravo, and I came to know Jesus about a year ago. I was baptized as a little baby, but I didn't really know anything about God. Now I know the Lord, and I feel His presence every day. I want to show my family and show Jesus that I'm living for Him, and I just want to commit my life to Him. The last year of loving and living for Jesus has been so fulfilling. I don't want to grow up in this world without knowing Jesus. You guys will stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're going to sing about it now. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No. Wow. I don't know if you know this, but with these portable baptistries, if you roll up your sleeve, you won't get wet. So it works really good. Yeah. It's so good to celebrate all the life changes and all the good things that God is doing. Can we give it up for these guys one more time? Just think, appreciate them. Sometimes in life, water baptism is your next step. And if you decided to follow Jesus and you haven't been baptized in water, it's your next step. Sometimes your next step is to start really reading the Bible. Start making Sunday morning church like a gathering part of your life. Sometimes it's joining a group. Whatever your next step is with God, it may take courage. Have the courage to do what's next for you. Amen? Amen. If God wants you to start a ministry or go on a mission trip, have the courage. You'll never regret stepping out in faith and having the courage what God has you to do. All right? Some of you, the, the courageous thing, the scary thing for you is to turn around and shake four or five people's hands. All right? So go ahead. That's your next step. Would you greet four or five people say, hi, my name is, and be friendly? Good morning, True Grace. If this is your first time, we just want to welcome you. There's a card in the seat back in front of you. If you fill that out and take that through the double doors at our guest services, we have a friendly face waiting there for you, and you can exchange that for a free gift. Also, if you're watching online, you can fill it out on our website if, and ask questions. Yeah, and um, we also have a women's brunch coming up on December 7th. This is such a fun way to just kick off the Christmas season. General tickets are on sale, and they usually go pretty fast, so make sure to check out our events page to get those tickets now. And coming up, we have our Thanksgiving family gathering on Thanksgiving Day at 10 a.m. This has become a family tradition here, and so many of us love to gather and count our blessings together, and we'd love to celebrate with you and your family. And a quick reminder for TGY, there is no on-campus youth on November 27th. We are encouraging students to spend time with their families for the Thanksgiving break. Have, Have a good rest of your service! <laughs> Young people are so fun to be around. 
Isn't today a great day? So many people getting baptized, so many people choosing to live their life for Jesus. It just, it makes me very happy. Well, I want to let you guys know something that's coming up. Youth Winter Camp is happening in January, and this is an incredible time. You guys, if you want your kids, your grandkids, just to have an an experience you can't even describe, where they get to go away from their normal life. They get to focus on Jesus. This is a catalyst for their faith. So I would encourage you, if you have a young person in your life, get them there. There's actually an early bird discount until December 18th. So make sure you check out the events page and sign up for that. I also have something really cool to share with you. Um, Our missions team just sent a check for $5,000 to Convoy of Hope. And if you guys don't know what Convoy of Hope is, they meet real needs for some people who are experiencing probably the worst day of their life. They are a disaster relief, they're a Christian organization, and they help people not only in the US, but around the world. And so as you know, there has been lots of natural disasters happening, and we get to be a part of that. So that's because of your guys' giving. So thank you for your generosity. When you give to missions here at True Grace, it goes to meet tangible needs. It helps others get to experience Jesus in a real way. So thank you for your generosity. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you that you partner with us and allow us to be a part of what you're doing, God, that you get to bless people in such powerful ways, Lord, meet real needs so that they can then experience your love. We are honored that we get to be a part of that. And would you just use those funds to bless people in a way that they could not even imagine? We thank you in your name. Amen. My name is Dean Johnston. I came to, uh, True Grace for the Freedom Session. My wife made me do it. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. And then I'm very grateful for her to to make me do it because I mean, it is my choice. But yeah, it's definitely better for us. The first time I walked in, I was a little uh, scared, not knowing what to expect because I've been taught different things. I was Catholic first, but me not knowing the context, I guess. People would tell you different things if I never read the Bible that much either. So from that point, I just started listening to the Bible on on the radio, on my phone. And then I would get a lot more from it. I could actually understand it at first. You know, the first time you listen to the Bible, it's like you're, you're like all these different doubts and all these different things on your head. You're trying to put different things together. And then the next time you hear it, you pick up a little bit more stuff. And it's just like, It'd be nice if everybody could just listen to the Bible. You're going to get the basically the blueprint of what you need to do. And you can talk to everybody else to see where you need to go from that point. I learned a lot from the story of Job. So the first time I listened to the story, I, I've never really even heard the story. But now when I listen to it on, the, on my phone, first thing I was like, wow, this guy's just kind of not a nice guy and you know towards God you know that's where I was coming from and then the next time I listened to it I was like wait a second I do the same thing I say why did you do this why am I here you know why what did I do wrong I go I know I did something wrong you know and I would go from that point what I'm working on now is the uh it'd be like anger blowing up that one I can actually stop myself before I start getting too mad. Sometimes it's a little late and then you go, sorry, you apologize to the people. But yeah, that's very important. So, I mean, there's just different aspects to the different stories in the Bible that gives you that. Not to be angry, to be, you know, peaceful, to be at peace with yourself. Everything you have is God's. So everything you do is for God. Get into Freedom Session to learn. I mean, I needed one part of it to make my life change. Who knows what you need in there, but if you actually go and see it, then you'll know. Man, thank you, Dean, for challenging us, encouraging us. The Bible really does help. How many uh, listen to the Bible rather than read the Bible? Anybody like, like Dean that does that? Some of you, that's that kind of a cool thing for you, and obviously working for him, and he talked about the church and having people around him to grow with as well. Um, I want to challenge you with this thought. When you, like Dean, submit yourself to like something like Freedom Session, a discipleship course, you actually say, I'm going to make sure that I discipline myself, that I stay in the faith. Um, that, you know, when you come to church on a regular basis, it's like I'm making this commitment. 
And um, sometimes you have uh, coaches or parents or pastors or people that kind of help you stay on track. Sometimes you don't uh, if you haven't made that choice to have that. And maybe you didn't grow up with, with family that really encouraged you spiritually, or maybe you did. Uh, either way, you can start now, right where you're at. Amen. And I remember when I was in high school, we signed up, um, I signed up for the basketball team, and we went out during Christmas break, winter break. The day after Christmas, they made us drive back to the school and run the track. I was like, this is crazy. But I submitted myself to the process, so we were in great shape after the winter break was over. Not every team was. Why? Because we disciplined ourselves. We joined in. We said, I'm not just going like, you know, to do conditioning when I feel like it. I'm going to do it all the time. And when I signed up for like a four-month semester-long class on weightlifting and, and running, guess what? At the end of that four months, I was stronger and faster than I was. When you submit yourself and say, God, it's not easy for me, um, but I'm going to grow closer to you. Man, how many people wake up on Sunday morning, I can't wait to go to church instead of watch football today. I got nothing to do around the house, so I guess I'll go to church. That, that doesn't happen, right? Like you make a decision to put God first in your life, and great things happen. So i um, super proud of everybody that's doing just that. This Thursday is Thanksgiving. I don't know if that was like football fans or fo food fans or whatever, just people happy to get out of school or work. I don't know. Um, but I, I've, the, listen, the older I've gotten, the more I love this holiday Thanksgiving. Because the, the more I realize what gratefulness does for your soul, what appreciating the blessings in your life does for you, like when you train your kids to say thank you and to honestly have gratitude in their life, it doesn't bless so much the person they say thank you to, it blesses your kid. Because if your kid understands gratitude and gratefulness, your kid's going to grow up and have a much more fulfilling, joyful life. Isn't, isn't that true? Yeah. And so it's not so much for the person you're thanking as it is just for your own spirit to understand that grateful spirit, how important that is in our lives, that you will be joyful, appreciative. Honestly, you'll be more fun to be around if you're a grateful person. And I believe that with, with all of my heart. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving since the holiday is here. And um, I'm going to challenge you with some thoughts on that. First one is this. Thanksgiving is not a holiday. Thanksgiving is a lifestyle. Like li some people, they just live a daily lifestyle of being thankful everywhere they go. They say thank you without even considering it. Uh, it doesn't even, it's not a, like, like sometimes with my wife, and I'll challenge you with this. Like sometimes I try to say, hey, thanks for doing the laundry. Hey, thank you for making the bed. I noticed that. Hey, thank you for this small thing. Because don't you know those small things mean a lot? And we go, well, of course you went to work. Or uh, of course you helped with the house. Or thank you for with, helping with the kids. Or what, those small things. Hey, thanks for doing the dishes. Like even if, if somebody does the dishes a lot in your house, thank them anyway, right? There's something good that happens when we're thankful like that in our lives. So um, I'm thankful for one of the things I'm thankful for is I wasn't there the very first Thanksgiving. Think about the first Thanksgiving. 102 people and 45 of them die. They don't make it through the winter. I mean, that, that's a, almost half the people are now dead. All of your community, half of them are, not, are suddenly gone. Thanksgiving was born, listen, out of deep hardship. Deep hardship. I promise you that first Thanksgiving, no one was thinking about the green bean casserole. They, they were like, we're alive. You know what they were thankful for? Native Americans who helped them plant like vegetables, right? Help them figure out how to weather the storm and get through that winter. Perhaps no one is more thankful than the person who's gone through an immense amount of turmoil and pain and suffering in their life and come out on the other side of that window. And you can now look back and see what God has brought you through. If that's your story, I pray that gratefulness, thankfulness is just, it just it's a lifestyle for you. Because you understand what, what could be and you're, you're grateful for what you have in this life. Can you imagine explaining to a pilgrim uh, what it's like today to eat food and to hunt your food? Like literally they had to like load buck, buckshot into their gun. They had to go out and find that bird. They had to shoot the bird. Then they had to bring it home. They had to pluck all the feathers and pull all the buckshot out of it. Right? Then they had to like cook it for however long on a fire, and finally they could eat it. Do you know what we do? We go to the grocery store and say, I'll take that one. Or we just drive up to a drive through window and say, thanks for the food. I mean, if, if you could take a pilgrim to a frozen turkey down at Safeway, they'd probably be like, what kind of black magic is this? <laughs> this is weird. This is scary. This is too easy. I love the story of the woman who was uh, shopping at Safeway. She was trying to pick out a frozen turkey, and they weren't big enough. She looked at the boy that worked there, the young man at Safeway, and she said, excuse me, young man, do these turkeys get any bigger? And he said, no, ma'am, they're all dead. I mean, then that's just the way it is.
thankfulness. Not only is thankfulness, uh, Thanksgiving, not, a, not just a holiday, it's a lifestyle. But the reality is this, and this is what I want to drive home to you today, that Thanksgiving is a practice. You can practice Thanksgiving again and again in your life, and listen, and you can get better at it. If you're not a person who's like really thankful on a regular basis, the more you practice something, you get better at it. How many practice um, piano growing up? Anybody practice piano? Some of you are like, I don't want to admit it because I'm terrible, okay? Um, <laughs> If you practice piano, you should get better, right? If you just get better, you spend more time at it. Go ahead and go through these with me. Um, practice driving. Um, you know, you should be better than some of you are, but that's okay. Uh, practice archery. Uh, you know, I only do like every five years, so I'm not any better. But those who practice get better. Practice karate. All of our ushers are trained in this uh, karate. All right, <laughs> the next one. Uh, dance. Like maybe you don't have good balance. You're not flexible now. But I'll tell you what, if you take a dance class, even some of you older guys, Right? You'd, be, you'd be more flexible, right? How about the next one? Clarinet or band. You get better. If you've listened to a fifth grade band and those kids stick with it at high school, aren't they a little better in high school than they are in fifth grade? <laughs> no offense, fifth graders, but your parents are, are angels, all right? How about this one? Just going for a run. I love the, men, the mentality. There, there's training and then there's trying really hard. Yeah. And I, whenever I think of running, I think of this illustration. If I said to you, hey, could you go out tomorrow, run two miles, three miles, four miles, five miles, you're probably like, I don't know. Some of you could do it. Some of you might say, I'm going to try really hard to run a half marathon this Saturday. And if you just try harder, you might end in like miserable failure. But if you train yourself over a period of months or years, you could do things months or years from now that you don't think you could do today because you trained yourself. You know, the Apostle Paul says, train yourself to be godly. It's not all about like, I'm going to just try harder to be holy. It's about getting back up. Surrounding yourself with good people. It's about getting God's word in you. It's about being encouraged by being around others. You train yourself to be godly, and you don't give up along the way. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to practice uh, godly habits, and one of them is Thanksgiving, and, and Thanksgiving <coughs> excuse me, is a practice that you can learn. All right, if you have a Bible, Philippians chapter 4. I love this text. Uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church, and in, in chapter 4, listen, like, this is true. When he gets to chapter 4 and he writes these words, he says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. And when this man who's gone through so much suffering in his life gets to this point, he says, And there's one really more important thing that I have to say to you in this letter to the church in Philippi. When he gets to this part, it's a really important part. In fact, I will say to you this, that Philippians chapter 4, what Paul wrote to the church that day, 2,000 years later, has changed my life. This principle, this scripture, has radically transformed who I am and how I think. I mean, I quote it, I go back to it, I, I practice it, I know I need it in my life. He says, now, dear friends, uh, there's this one more clear, important point, and I'm going to drive it home here. And this is what he says. Go ahead and put it on the screen. Fix your thoughts. He says to the church, fix your thoughts on what is true. Why? Because do you ever think things that are not true? Probably more than you even realize. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Because sometimes we don't do that. Sometimes we think things that are impure. Not you, but the person next to you, right? Or sometimes we don't fill our minds with things that are excellent and praiseworthy. And we think things that are lies. And we think, we think, we think back, I should have done this different. I wish I had said that. And all the regrets and all the struggles and all the trials. Just this week, I went for a run. And I said, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just thank you for good things in my life. Two minutes into the run, I was thinking about something and complaining about it. I was actually thinking about things that I wish I'd done differently and said, man, I should have done that better. And I stopped and I thought, I'm on this run to give thanks to God. I had to shut off the music, even though it was great music, and I had to focus and not be distracted. And even then on my run, I had to keep coming back from these distractions. No, God, I am thankful that you got me through this. And I'm grateful for this part of my life. I love this scripture. Uh, Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. I gotta tell you, some of us in real life and a lot of people in this world, but maybe you at times in your life, you read it like this. Fix your thoughts on what is false and all the ways that you got rejected and all the things that went wrong. Think about impure things and things that are ugly and, and things that you wish had never happened. Think about all the ways you got screwed over in life, right? 
and focus your energy on that. That's not what the scripture says. It's so easy to go the wrong way. And, and then Paul follows this, this, this message. By the way, I love Joyce Meyer, which she said this. She said, she said listen, some days I, I criticize my boss. I, I complain to my husband. Uh, I, I get mad at the people around me. I'm mad at myself. Uh, and she says, then I finally get out of bed, right? <laughs> because it's all happening inside your mind. And there's a battlefield in our mind. And sometimes I think you and I have to call a timeout and say, I'm not going to go there. I'm not letting my mind think whatever falls into my head. I'm going to choose what I think about. And I'm not going to go back to that mistake I made years ago. And I'm not going to let that person ruin my day. No, I'm going to fill my thoughts with with thoughts that honor God. And it's a discipline and it's hard to do. I I made a decision at one point in my life to stop saying, well, you know, if it could happen, it would. Have you ever said that? Well, if it could happen to somebody, it would happen to me. And I was uh, mowing my lawn a week ago. And I decided I needed to mow the, the lawn in my riding lawnmower, and when I, I would stop when the fuel ran out. That way there'd be no old fuel coming this next spring. And so I mowed my grass, and I mowed it all out, and I got to the end, and the, and the engine went out. But do you know when I ran out of gas? It was when I was the farthest from the shed possible in my yard. <laughs> and no one's home, and I have to push the riding mower all the way to the shed. And this is what happened. I stopped. I, you know, if it could happen... Lord, thank you for my riding lawnmower. Because <laughs> I don't want to be that guy anymore. I don't want to fill my thoughts with things that are not true, not trustworthy, not good. Lord, I want to fill my thoughts with things that are true and pure. So today I want to give you a few practices. Verse 9 says it like this. Keep putting into practice, right? Paul even says it in the next verse. Keep putting into practice all that you've learned. Like actually do it. Uh, Live this out in your life. So let me give you three things. Number one, practicing thanksgiving keeps you from taking life for granted. It keeps you from taking life for granted. You know all of the hardships of your job. But have you ever thought about that there's other jobs that have hardships as well? When I, I like living in Western Washington, when I'm having a really awful day and, and people's lives are bloody and I'm not feeling it and I'm hurt and I'm just struggling, I go, you know what, God, I could be like digging a ditch in the rain in Western Washington. This could be my job. If this is your job, I'm sorry. And just you know, Jesus compared tax collectors. I'm going to compare this. Like, I'm glad that I don't have to be out there with my back trying to shovel dirt all day long. Um, sometimes when, when health isn't great as we can complain, listen, I'm, gl- I'm glad that I don't have mangled limbs and I'm in the hospital right now. And if I ever am, I hope I'm smiling like this guy right here. But there's so many things that could be going wrong and, and sometimes we just get upset about small things. I'm glad that my car is running right now. Anybody gl- grateful your car is running? Again, if your car is r- not running, I apologize, but it's for the message, all right? But like, honestly, like there's so many blessings in life that it was so easy for us to, to take for granted. And we want to be people who don't take things for granted. Honestly, on a scale of 1 to 100, how, how thankful are you for the blessings in your life? Maybe you're like 50. Maybe you're like 90. How thankful are you for the many blessings? Are you in touch with the blessings in your life? There's probably a lot. The second one is this. Practicing Thanksgiving on good days helps you get through your bad days. Like if you're constantly thinking about all the blessings and the good things, then when you have that really horrid day, you know not every day is like this. And there will be good days again in the future if we stop and thank God for the good days. Sometimes I say, God, I can't believe this. Like I'm studying for a message this week. Like I get paid to read the Bible, God. This is so cool. And sometimes we'll have a big staff meeting and a celebration. I'll be like, I'm getting paid right now to eat lunch. How amazing is this? And I just try to find those small things and just say, God, I'm so, I get to work for a church. And find those things that you're just like so grateful for and thank God for those small things, those little things in your life. Practicing Thanksgiving on good days will get you through the hard days that are still yet to come. Practice it. There's a story about a man who, uh, two two friends, actually old friends, and they bumped into each other on the street one day. Hadn't seen each other for many years and one of them looked forlorn and on the verge of tears. And so his friend said, man, what in the world has happened to you over the years? And the sad fellow said, well, let me tell you this. Three weeks ago, my aunt, whom I hardly knew, passed away, and I inherited $100 million. His friend replied, man, that is a lot of money. And then the sad friend continued. Then two weeks ago, a cousin I never even knew died, and he left me $85,000 free and clear. Man, it sounds like you've been really blessed. He says, you don't understand. And he interrupted his buddy. He said, last week, my uncle died, and he left me $40,000. 
Now the other friend was really confused. He said, then, then why do you look so glum and down? And the sad friend re- responded this way, this week, no one's given me nothing. And maybe we kind of look at that, well, I would never have that kind of attitude, but maybe there's some blessings in our life that we take for granted, that we need to stop and realize uh, that we can practice Thanksgiving uh, regardless of our circumstances. Number three is this, practicing Thanksgiving leads to contentment. Contentment in your life. Man, have you ever been in a room of people and some people are content and some people aren't? And I always go, God, I hope I'm the content one, right? There are people today, some of us in this church, and we're like, man, my car is old. I don't like my car. And if you went to a foreign country, you'd find people who walk everywhere, and once in a while they pay money and they get a motorcycle taxi, right? Or maybe you're here and you're like, my car is so old, you can't even hook up your phone to it. And there's other people going, I am so blessed, God. My car has hit 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles. God, thank you. What a blessing, right? It's a choice in, in how we look at our lives, um, the gratefulness that we can have in our spirit towards what God has given to us. Thanksgiving is not, not a day. It's a, it's, a, it's a practice. It's a lifestyle. And I'm here to tell you today, if you choose to th- practice Thanksgiving like 12 months a year, 365 days a year, a year from now, we'll actually all like you better, right? You'll actually be a really fun person to be around because you'll be the one finding the silver lining. You'll be the one with a great attitude when times are really hard. And people gravitate toward people who do that. Let's hang out with her. Maybe you've heard this to- the story of Corey Ten Boom and, and those, those people in the Holocaust. And they chose gratefulness and thankfulness. They were prisoners because of their faith. They were treated like animals. And she said, we kept hope and we thanked God for every blessing while we were imprisoned. Wow. There's a character that's developed in people like that. Dr. Randy came and pointed out the benefits of of practicing Thanksgiving. There's four benefits that jumped out of me in his study. He said people who uh, practiced Thanksgiving, they had decreased, decreased stress, anxiety, depression, and headaches in their life when they thanked, uh, when they were thankful and thanked God for what they have. By the way, um, we really believe this, that Thanksgiving was a day set aside to thank God. It's not to thank the turkey. It's not to thank the Dallas Cowboys. Sorry, Cowboys fans. It's not your year, okay? (laughs) It's to thank God. The Apostle Paul said, I've learned to be content whatever my circumstances. He says this, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Who is it that every time you think of that person, you are so thankful to God? Probably it's your family. Probably it's your close friends. I'll give you a few of mine. When my son was born, uh, he had a heart defect, and the doctor saved his life when he was nine days old, first surgery. And then when he was three days old, he had open heart surgery, and the doctor saved his life again. I'm thankful for those doctors. Uh, my dad recently went on dialysis. I'm thankful for the guy who invented dialysis, right, to help one of my family members. Um, I don't know who you list. Who are those people in this life that you are thankful for, that you are grateful for uh, in your world? I'm thankful for my dog, my wife, my son, and my daughter. Not necessarily in that order, okay. (laughs) But who is it that every time you think of them, you go, thank God for them. Sometimes I just say, God, thank you for True Grace Church. I always leave there encouraged. I always leave there blessed and, and lifted up. I'm so grateful for the people at our church. List the things that you're thankful for. And the scripture says it like this, and let the peace of God that comes from Christ rule your hearts, for as members of one body you are called to live in peace, grace and peace to you, Paul would say, and always be thankful. And some of us be kind of like, oh, always? I don't know about that always part, Paul. Like, that's kind of hard. In Thessalonians, he says it like this, always be joyful. Always choose joy in your life. Don't always be happy, because happiness is, uh, comes and goes, but always choose joy. Always be joyful. Never stop praying, and be thankful in all circumstances. Listen, I want to remind you that you don't have to be thankful for your circumstances, because some of the, your circumstances are not good. But even with the circumstances you're forced to live in, you can be thankful even in the midst of those circumstances. Now I walked through the hospital. Man, I, I just... I went to the hospital recently to, to, to talk with someone, pray with someone. They prayed for me. And they prayed a better prayer for me than I prayed over them. I'll tell you that much. Some people are just able to 
choose gratefulness no matter what their circumstances. And they're incredible people to be around. What is your circumstances today? What about the worst day of your life? Do you know that this, this thing, like think on these things, choose gratefulness, thankfulness, believe things that are true. When you get this down, this is a weapon to fight off the worst days of your life. In 2003 and 2004, especially 2004, it was the worst year of my life. I just had a, a rough year family-wise, a lot of medical things work-wise. Life was just, it was kind of ugly and hard. And I think back now, and, and I think, what if I went through 2003, 2004, and I didn't have the weapon of thankfulness? How much worse would it have been if I didn't stop and say, but Lord, I am so grateful in spite of all this, that you created me, that you died for me, that I have hope, that I have a purpose, that you've blessed me, and you've called me, and you've used me in my life. Lord, thank you for my family and my friends. Maybe your circumstances are a disease. Maybe your circumstances is broken relationships. Maybe there's hardship in your life that very few people know about other than God. Man, that's the time where you need to press into God the most. You need to lean into God the most and say, Lord, thank, for, thank you for your spirit in my life. I'm choosing to practice thanksgiving even in these days. Throughout the scripture, Paul also challenges us not to complain in our lives. It's easy to do that. Um, Dale Robbins wrote this. He said, I used to uh, think that people who complained because they, had, they, they complained because they had a lot of problems, right? We would think that. But he says, I've come to realize that they have problems because they complain. Complaining doesn't change anything or make any situation better. It amplifies frustration. It spreads discontent and discord. And it can invoke an invitation for the devil to cause havoc with our lives. Complaining makes us miserable. And there are times in my marriage, uh, my wife and I will be on a walk or we'll be eating together. And I'll say, man, things are kind of hard right now. Let's stop and just count our blessings. Let's play the glad game, we'll say. And I'll say, what's one thing you're grateful for? And she'll, she'll spit something out, and then I'll spit something out, and it'll be her turn and my turn. And we'll go back and forth maybe four or five times. We'll get distracted by something in the conversation, and we'll come back to it again. Why? Because, listen, the close relationships with you, if you go home and you say, I don't like my boss, and my back hurts, and I don't know what happened to the dog, and the car's making awful sounds, and, and the kids don't know how to clean up after themselves, you can really spin yourself into a bad place, can't you? But you can also have the kind of spouse who lifts you up and you, you're grateful together and you can get yourselves together in a better place, emotionally, spiritually, mentally in a better place. Amen. And we choose to do that in our lives. Listen, don't, don't go home to your best friend or your spouse and just complain to them all day. You're just gonna take each other to a bad place. Go home and say, hey, how can I lift you up? How can we encourage one another today? Psalm 77, three says, I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Philippians, Paul says, do everything without complaining or arguing. That's not just for your kids or your teenagers. That's for you. <laughs> do everything without complaining or arguing. Listen, if you live your life focused on what you've lost, you won't make the most of what is left. So you can't control if you had a family that encouraged you spiritually. You can't control if you had some hardships in the past. But you got these days left. What if you pressed into God? From here on out, what if you said, hey, uh, I haven't been living for God, but today I can start. Today, I'm going to live for God. Today, I'm going to lead my family. Today, I'm not going to complain. Today, I'm going to lift up. Today, I'm going to recognize when I'm saying, well, if it could happen, it would happen to us. And I'm going to stop and call a time out and say, Lord, thank you for the blessings in my life. Yes. It's a weapon, this ability to be thankful. People who count their blessings are happier regardless of their circumstances. So the challenge today is to practice thanksgiving. In just a moment, we're going to sing this song, It Is Well. We're going to sing the newer version of the song. And not everybody sees it as a Thanksgiving Day song, but one year we sang it on Thanksgiving, and I thought, that song is so fitting. Some of you know the story of the man, Horatio Spafford. His kids drown in a boat going across the Atlantic from the States back to Europe. And... Story goes that when he was on the boat going over to meet his wife and they had lost their kids, that he wrote these lyrics to this song over the spot where his kids had died. And it would have been an easy thing to say, I'm not going to serve God. Look what happened. 
And he wrote the, these lines, you know, whether, whether I have sorrows or whether I have peace, either way, I'm going to serve the Lord with my life. What an powerful thing to say, regardless even of the biggest tragedy that I could ever endure, I'm not giving up my faith in God. I'm pressing in. So I'm going to ask if you'd stand to your feet and invite the team to come out here. And I just want to just maybe just prepare our hearts for a moment. Can we just bow for a moment? Lord, there are some of us today who are facing disease. There are some of us, God, here who our families are hurting and broken. Probably all of us, God, in some way have hurt and pain and suffering in our family. Lord, in spite of death, even in betrayal, in hardship and suffering, we choose to honor you. Lord, today give us this powerful weapon of gratefulness in spite of our circumstances. Lord, help us to never take anything for granted. And God, maybe we didn't have the childhood or maybe we don't have the track record with you that we wish we had. Lord, help us to start today. Help us to press in today and to lead others toward you today. Church, just in a spirit of gratefulness, we're going to sing this song. And if you're here today and you're pressing into God, I'm going to just mention the altar is open. And what a cool thing to stop and just say, I'm going to go down to the altar as we sing this song. And I'm going to honor God. I'm going to press in. And I'm going to choose gratefulness in my circumstances. Let's sing together. If you'd like to come forward and pray, you can. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are. 
it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well. It is well, regardless of our circumstances, if we have Jesus, we can trust in that. I love what Pastor Peter said. We may not be thankful for our circumstances, but we can always be thankful in our circumstances. Would we choose to be a people that would live a life of thankfulness? This week is Thanksgiving. I wanna invite you all to our Thanksgiving gathering at 10 a.m. There's a very sweet spirit in the room. It's one that you don't wanna miss. And make sure you encourage somebody else before you leave today. Have a great rest of your day.